Okay, folks, I believe you're heading up towards Pandanus uh, Park to do a bit of camping and a bit of fishing. Uh, I'm just here to give you a couple of little hints so you don't take the wrong gear up there with you. I take up with me Zerek lures, these fellas. They're a hidden, uh, you can see them. See the hook comes out of them once, once the fish strikes. But every time I retrieve, I'll push it back up into there and recast back into the target area, right where the barrow money's uh, lurking, and I get pretty good success with those. Uh, the standard lure, these sort of chappies, they just get hung up in trees. You can catch fish on them, but geez, you, you lose a lot and it gets horribly expensive. I run in front of that, of course. I run Jenkai. This is a 100 pound Jenkai gill raker. Uh, because a barra, when, when you hook on, it's like a freight train hitting you uh, and he throws his head everywhere. So I put at least a half a metre of that between the lure uh, with a perfection knot and up to my braid. My braid, I'm running about 30 kilo braid. You might think that's heavy, but I have my drag up tight, cast, and the minute he hits, I'm turning him out of that, uh, out of that snag and out of that weed. Uh, don't let him get a chance to go back in, or well, that's the end of that. A lot of these style little lures, they do well uh, where you've got clear water. Uh, but the minute you get into snaggy water, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to foul on that hook. Uh, what else? Um, now, there's different ways to catch your um, a barrow money. You can have a set line, which I've just made up a dummy here for you. That's a set line. I crimp that lead onto there so that I can adjust it up and down the line for depth. I don't set it too deep. If you go too deep, you'll catch catfish and eels. Um, but if you just set it here and put the little stripey on the end of here, I'll tell you how to catch them in a minute. Put your stripey on there, leave him alive, and let him swim around here like this. And you, you put him out on a gin pole. You can see what's happening there? That goes off the bank of the river. Over the bank of the river, I generally put it through a fork of a tree, keep it away from the bank so that that stripey can't swim back to the bank and hide during the night. He's out there, he's a target, he's doing donuts, and the big barrow just come along the bank, find him, hit him, gone. That's how we do that. They generally strike up around about, just after dark, uh, on your set lines, just after dark, because then they come out for a little bit of a hunt then, and so does uh, Mr. Crocodile. Any spin uh, gear for casting lures is good. I run a uh, 1800, uh, uh, 6500C3 Abu Ghazir. Uh, it fits into my truck easily, that dismantles easily, I'm not carrying a great bit of gear. Um, heavy braid. Uh, and I pull my drag right up tight, the minute he hits, I'm onto him. Turn his head, get him out, and get you away from the water before Mr. Uh, Crocodile decides you can hear a bit of commotion down that end of the paddock. So, just be aware of that. Now, I told you about those hooks that I'm running on the gin poles or on my set lines. I'm using True Turn 5 but you can go a bit bigger because they've got a hell of a big mouth, those barrel. Now, to get your cherub to get your um, little stripies, I use these weeny little type fly hooks. I'll try and hold it against my shirt so you can see the size of it. Look, weeny weeny. Now, I generally take about a bit of an eight or ten pound line, put it on the stick or on the tip of my rod here, and just dangle it over the bank until I can catch the little stripies and the bait I use on the end of there is what's left inside the cherubin's head. I take the body off the cherubin, that goes for my food um, and then I get in, crack the head open and you'll find two little slabs of meat inside the head and I, I cut it up to ever so small, just sit it on here, send it down and they bite it and they get the hook as well and you pull your little stripey up. I keep them in a bucket of water, uh, if you can like in a little bait keeper. Uh, let the water flow through it, and, and, and you, if you catch good ones today, they'll stay alive for a couple of days. But put it through their back, just below the petrol, above that, that plutal line, just hook it in there and just let them swim, and they'll swim in the water. Don't let them get back to the bank or they'll hide in the bank. So leave them out wide, on your gin pole, this is for your set lines, on your gin pole, out wide, and just let him sit there. Now, on the retrieve line of the gin pole, on this other end, this goes back and I tie that to a tree. This is an 80 pound Schneider. I always take a roll with me because you never know what you can use it for. Um, that goes back to the tree, tied off to a tree somewhere. And I put a couple of beer cans tied up with fishing line. Three or four is good because it makes a, a sound. And I put some stones. I find some stones on the road 
put them in the beer cans, wash them out first because the stones will stick to the old beer because it's got a lot of sugar in it. So wash your cans out, hang them on here. When the barrow money hits that end there, the line straightens, the beer cans jump in the air to make a rattle. That's your booby trap and your alarm. Remember, if he can hear it, if you can hear it, so can the crocodile. So when you come down to your line to retrieve, stay well back up the bank uh, and, and retrieve your barrel like that. Uh, sometimes I'll even put a retrieve line on, on the float side so that so I've got that one going to a tree, tied off, and this one just loops somewhere so I can actually pull the barrel up the, up the bank without going down to the bank on this line. Um, I don't like anchoring into the bottom with a big sinker uh, because if you do that, you generally take it to the bottom and you generally get catfish and eels and stuff like that. You want to keep this well up in the water stream uh, just almost just out of sight. If you can see the float and you can't see the, the fish swimming around, you're just about on the money. Uh, and Mr. Barrow will come up and get that. All right, now, cherubim, cherubim we catch with um, uh, in opera house nets, like this bloke here. You know the ones with the two holes? Standard old nine, ten dollar pot. Um, what I use for bait, so take this with you when you go, I just take a five kilo pack of cat food with tuna or something in it. You know those little cat pellets, the hard ones? With tuna in it just to give you that uh, fishy oily smell which attracts the cherubim. Now anywhere in the fresh water up there you can catch cherubim. It doesn't have to be deep, it, it's just got to be, you put them in, check them every 24 hours, that's all you have to do. But don't go back, please don't go back at the same time every day. Uh, humans are a, a creature of habit and a crocodile knows it. If you go back and bend down over that log to pick up that bit of string at the same time every day, don't be surprised if the big fella's waiting there for you. But that's how they hunt. I tie that up well up the bank, a little tag on the end of it. I can pull up, I can get my tag here, pick up the slack, just go forward, pull the pot up and get the hell out of there. Check my pot, rebait it, flick it back in or move it. I try to move my pots regularly. Again, creatures of habit. Don't play their game. Um, they do attack your pots if you happen to get a good, a good catch of cherubim. That was an opera house pot. I've straightened a bit of the wire frame, but he's actually eaten it. He's chewed in through here, through the bottom, through the sides, through the top. But I'd say there's been a good catch of cherubim in here, and he's, he's attacked it to get the food. Another simple one before you go up there, I collect all my vitamin bottles and medicine bottles, and drill holes through them and it makes it very easy to change your bait. When your bait gets a bit sour, you spin the top off, shake it out, put new stuff in, screw it, screw it back on, throw it back in the water. Quick, don't forget. When you've got to clean it out of a, a, a little pod made out of shade cloth or something, you're, you're there shaking and carrying on like an idiot. So, And that has been monstered by a young freshwater crocodile. That was a square bottle, and he's crushed the lid and all. So be aware they're there, so um, just play it safe. Um, so I've told you about the Genkai or the Dill Raker. I've told you about the braid. I use heavy braid, 65003C, uh, Abu Garcia, drag right up, 1800 rod, take plenty of tackle. There's nowhere else you can buy tackle up there other than Cook Town Cans from Ariba. Uh, so take whatever tackle you need. Don't take mountains of it. Um, but take enough to survive your trip into Pandanus. Remember, little tiny baby hooks, look at the size of that thing. Little baby hooks, at least number fives for your barrow fishing. Um, and if you want to move up to where the salt water is and have a quick foot barrow, <coughs> I use these squidgies and, and little plastics and that, but make sure you get something with a real strong hook. And this has got a lead weight in the front of it too, but a real strong hook because they'll just about straighten these. These little things here, useless. They just straighten them straight out. Those things there, they've got a pretty decent hook, but it's nothing worse than spending the time to, and walking through the mud and stuff to get to a good barrel hole and he straightens your hook on you. Go a bit heavier than what you think. Um, uh, blokes like that are pretty successful, but they're, they're, they're pretty hooky. Real big, and that's about a 5-0 hook in that one. Okay. All right, folks, if you need any more info from me, you'll catch me on the internet. My phone number's on there, Peter Hanna.